The following here is an article from the Reformed Presbyterian Magazine's November 1838 edition entitled Religious State of Europe. The following narrative by the Reverend Mr. Baird, who spent three years in traveling through Europe, furnishes a succinct statement of much interesting intelligence respecting the religious condition of most of the kingdoms of Europe and will be read with interest and, we trust, with profit. I first speak of France, as it was the seat of my mission. That country contains a population of about 34 million, of whom about 32 million are Catholics and infidels, and the remaining portion are nominally Protestant. Still, even among those who are called Protestant, evangelical religion is exceedingly low in France. After the Reformation came a time of awful depression. Twenty years ago, there was but very little among, very little religion excuse me, among the Protestants. It was not known that there were more than half a dozen ministers in the whole kingdom who were truly evangelical. But since that time, evangelical religion has been constantly increasing. Out of 600 Protestant ministers supported by the state, about 100 are faithful men. Fifty or sixty more are employed by the evangelical societies of Paris and Geneva, making the whole number of evangelical laborers something like 150. As to the Catholic population, there are probably some pious people among them, but their number is exceedingly limited. The great mass care, uh, the great mass care very little about religion. They do not go with any regularity to the churches. On ordinary occasions, most of the people who go into the churches are females, and those of the very lowest rank in society. Still, since the Revolution of 1830, there has been a growing concern for religion among educated men. I have never met with one of this class who has not said, France needs religion and must have it. They have two Bible societies and a tract society that publishes more than 100 tracts. They have an evangelical society which employs coal porters and even evangelists. This with another society employs about 80 men, besides supporting 30 or 40 young men who are at preparing for the ministry, 26 of whom are at the seminary at Geneva under five professors. What is needed is that the societies which exist there should be sustained. The people are everywhere willing to hear, but the, so the society who have undertaken the work must... Uh, but the society who have undertaken the work have not the means to carry it on. They have depended and must continue to depend on the aid they receive from this country. Evangelical confederations are assembled in every part of France, but they are feeble compared with the congregations in this country. 150 to 200 is generally the size of their congregations at the beginning. 500 to 1,000 is a congregation rarely to be found. Among these evangelical Christians, there is but little wealth. They give as liberally as any people I ever saw, but have very little means. What is doing is enough to encourage us. Though there is some opposition from the government, yet it is not insurmountable. A contest is going on for religious liberty. Several trials have taken place. In some instances they have been decided for, and some against the evangelical party. It will be at last decided by the great course of cassation. The obstacles will be overcome, and not many years will elapse before religious liberty will be mature and complete. They look for and expect our aid. Switzerland in that country, the population is two million. Less than one half of these are Protestants. Some of the cantons are entirely Catholic. Those of the West are mainly Protestant. So low was religion twenty years ago that there was not more than one evangelical ministry in the canton of Vaud. Now there are more than one hundred, and more than two hundred in all the cantons. As to the German cantons, there has been a considerable advance of evangelical religion, especially in Basel, where they have about 30 evangelical pastors. In the seminary of that city, every young professor is evangelical, and 40 young men are in a course of preparation as missionaries to the heathen. Belgium. This country is also intimately connected with France. The population of this country is about 4.25 million, almost the entire mass of whom are Catholics of the Austrian stamp, which is the most bigoted kind. There, in former days, persecution raged, and Protestantism was almost entirely banished from the kingdom. Now there are not more than fifteen Protestant ministers, of whom six or seven are evangelical. Though this kingdom is so thoroughly Catholic, and though we see more people in the churches there than anywhere else, yet the government of Belgium is perfectly free, the most free of all the governments of Europe. There is perfect toleration. The king of Belgium is a nominal Protestant, and no obstacles are thrown in the way of the propagation of the truth by the government but there is much opposition from the priests. Still, the truth is gaining ground and will ultimately prevail. Almost all the progress made is among Catholics. 
Before I leave this field, let me say that it is not for nothing that 100,000 copies of the scriptures have been distributed among this people. An impression has been made, and I have no doubt the time is not far distant when the impression will be very great. The truth is brought before men's minds. The Bible is disrupted by culporters, which is the most efficient plan that can be devised, and one which I wish to see adopted here. He sits down and converses about the Bible and reads and explains it, and in many instances, men's minds have been turned to the subject of religion through these conversations. In one village, more than 1,500 inhabitants rose up and told the priest to go away and sent for a Protestant minister who came and preached in the open air to 1,500 people who had never heard a sermon before. I should not be astonished if this goes on. The day is not distant when men will turn en masse toward the truth. In Holland, there is at this moment a most interesting state of things. The population of this country is about three million, two-thirds of which are Protestants. In that kingdom where religion once flourished for the last 30 or 40 years, a most lamentable state of things has prevailed. But true religion is now reviving. The truth is gaining ground, though the government has persecuted in a most cruel manner. All over Holland are beginning to be held little meetings in private houses, and this work is going on notwithstanding the opposition of the government, which is putting in prison those who have meetings in their houses of more than 19 persons. They also quarter soldiers upon those families that have means of supporting them, but now there is some reason to believe that the government is ready to abandon the system of persecution. They are now more than there are now more than 200 of these little meetings in different parts of the kingdom. With regard to Germany as a whole, Religion is reviving. There are more than 1,000 ministers who preach the truth as it is in Jesus, but Protestantism is the lowest in Hanover and Saxony of any part of Germany. But in all Germany, religion is increasing, particularly in Prussia. And yet in that country, out of 7,500 ministers, more, not more than about 600 are evangelical. As to Denmark, the state of religion is exceedingly low. There are in this country about 1,000 ministers of the Lutheran denomination. There are very few who are not nominally Protestant, but true religion has been very low for the last 50 years. In the two universities, not one of the professors is evangelical. Yet among the young men at these seminaries, there are some who are pious. There are several young men, as many as seven or eight, particularly two brothers, who are decidedly evangelical and whose influence is great. Sweden. It is difficult to say precisely what is the state of religion there. It is nominally Protestant, and there is little open heresy. German neology has made very little prog uh, progress. Most of, the pa most of the ministers are theoretically sound, but not in heart. They are very much like the high church party in England, moral but not spiritual. Still, there are ministers in Sweden, and their numbers are considerable, who are faithful. Norway. Here religion is low enough, but there has been an increase of piety by the efforts of many laymen who, sometimes since, commenced assembling the people to read the scriptures, and that way spreading considerable light. Russia. Here is a door open to all for the circulation of tracts and the holy scriptures. The people are exceedingly desirous to receive books and tracts. The emperor has permitted a Protestant Bible society to be organized at St. Petersburg, which is doing great good. The government also favors the distribution of tracts and religious books, and particularly the efforts made by the conversion of the Jews, made for the conversion of the Jews, excuse me. The ministry of the Russian church are very honest, but very ignorant class of men. There are 250,000 of them, including the monks, but the priests of the Russian church differ from those of the Catholic in the important particular that they are almost all married. They have much to do and little salaries. I was particularly struck with their honesty. There are many things interesting in the Russian church. They deny the infallibility of the church, so they have no popery. They also allow people to read the scriptures. I have no doubt under the blessing of God pure religion will be revived in that great empire and other nations through their influence. There are inquiring, there are inquiring and pious people in the Greek church in Russia. There are some sects in the interior of Russia who maintain the true gospel. Poland is entirely open to the gospel. There are eight excellent men laboring for the benefit of the Jews, supported by the Jews' society in England. It is their opinion that the truth of God is gaining ground with the Jews, and they think efforts might be made to a considerable extent for them with success. The government favors it, and if they continue and afford their shield to defense a man from persecution from his friends when he embraces Christianity, I have very little doubt that the two million, that the two million of Jews in Poland will en masse profess Christianity, and I hope a great part of them true Christianity.
But whilst these missionaries baptize one, the Catholics and Greeks baptize ten. But all they require is a mere profession. From all I could learn in Poland, I am ready to believe that by far the greater number of the Jews are convinced that the Messiah has already come. Austria. This country has a population of 32 or 33 million. There are some Protestants, but I'm sorry to say that evangelical religion in the Protestant church there is at its very lowest ebb. Within the last two or three years, there has been some movement in Hungary. Some ministers are coming back to the truth. The young men from Austria must study two years in some German university, and most of them are obliged to study at Hall under the instruction of the excellent Professor Tholuck, and many of them will go back carrying with them the truth. The government allows the distribution of the Bible and religious tracts among Protestants, and this goes on under the influence and direction of the wife of the Viceroy, who is a Protestant, and it is hoped pious. In Austria itself, including Vienna, it is difficult to find one Protestant minister who is evangelical. In Italy, ten or twelve Protestant churches are allowed, for the sake of the Protestant population who are not native Italians. In the army of the King of Naples, of six thousand Swiss, nearly all are nominal Protestants. When they entered the service, they stipulated for the free exercise of their religion, and they have two chaplains, one of whom is evangelical. They do not labor for the Catholic population, but it is of the utmost importance that true religion be revived in these churches. There are also the remains of the Waldenses whom I visited. They have fifteen ministers. Religion is looking up. Schools are established. A college has been commenced. All this is done by their own efforts, through the fostering care of an English gentleman residing among them. Several of their ministers are decidedly evangelical, and perhaps none are heretical.